Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Oleg Jorkowski and I'm one of the developers of Spring Integration Framework. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to one of the newest additions to Spring Portfolio, and that is a Spring Integration Scholar DSL project. So what is Spring Integration Scholar DSL? Spring Integration Scholar DSL is a domain-specific language written in Scala uh, for Spring Integration. And the goals of the projects are to provide a strongly typed Scala alternative to XML-style configuration for Spring Integration, to raise awareness of Spring Integration in Scala community, to provide first-class ACA integration, and to provide a seamless integration with Java, so Scala developers can still leverage their existing Java investments. For those of you who are not familiar with Spring Integration project and or enterprise integration patterns, I will provide a high-level short introduction. However, as you know, more information is always available on our website. Spring Integration is an extension of the Spring programming model to support the well-known enterprise integration patterns. It enables lightweight messaging within Spring-based applications and supports integration with external systems via declarative adapters. At the very core of enterprise integration patterns is the architecture known as pipes and filters. Filters, which are also known as endpoints, are connected through pipes, known as channels, and they exchange messages. Message is a very simple structural object which consists of two attributes, payload and headers, and message channels, which is the component that actually decouples producers from the consumers and also provides support for the two core messaging paradigms, uh, which is point-to-point -point and publish-subscribe. And here we have uh, some of the core message endpoint types. Here we see transformer, filter, router, splitter, and aggregator. Those are the main ones, but of course there are more, and we'll discuss them in detail sometime in the future. And finally, Spring Integration. So what is Spring Integration? Spring Integration is a framework, which is a reference implementation of enterprise integration patterns. It is built on top of Spring, and it runs within Spring, any Spring application context. To better understand the motivations for providing Scala-based DSL for Spring Integration, let's look at the sample application written conventional way, where configuration is done through XML and Java. Here we have a typical uh, XML configuration for Spring Integration message flow. As you can see, it begins with a messaging gateway, and then we have filter, transformer, and service activator. So once the message is sent to the messaging gateway, the messaging gateway will hand it off to a filter, where the message will be filtered based on the value of its payload. Uh, then it's going to go to transformer, where it's going to be modified by prepending the world hello to the payload of the message, and then gets to the service activator, which plays the role of the logger, and hopefully, by the time we get to the service activator, we'll see something in the console resembling a hello world. As you can see, the components are connected to one another by defining a pair of matching input and output channels. For example, in the gateway we have a request channel, in channel, which is the same channel as the input channel of this filter, and the output channel of the filter is the same channel as the input channel of the transformer, and so on. So this is your basic spring integration messaging flow, and this is how the endpoints are connected together. Uh, in order for us to execute this messaging flow, all we need to do is initialize spring application context uh, with this configuration, um, get the gate reference to a gateway, and send a message to it. So let's try to do it. And we got ourselves a hello world. So everything worked. So now let's look at how this configuration can be implemented using Scala DSL. And here it is. What you see right now is identical configuration written in Scala. Before we move on, Let's quickly understand the design behind um, Spring Integration Scala DSL. 
So spring integrations called DSL consists of two parts. First part is the uh, Fluent API, which helps you configure the spring integration components. In this case, we have a filter, a transformer, and a handler, which is also known as service activator. And the second part to Scala based on spring integration DSL is the continuity operator, which is this dash dash uh, greater than sign. So you configure integration components using a Fluent API, and you connect them using this continuity operator. And that's all there is to it. Now, let's try to compare these two configurations, um, basically the XML and Scala. First thing you should notice is how much quicker it is to write something like this using Scala DSL, simply because you use Scala not only to execute the messaging flow, but also to describe it. In that example, flow was described in XML and you had two different artifacts to maintain. So, for example, we had this XML configuration, which was describing the messaging flow, and then we also had the Java program that would be executing this message flow. Where in Scala, everything is done in a single artifact. Another thing you'll see is how much more concise the Scala configuration is. In XML, the continuity of the flow is described by explicitly configuring a pair of matching input and output channel attributes of the respective endpoints. Again, let's quickly look at that. So we have, for example, output channel of this filter is matching the input channel of this transformer. These are extremely valuable artifacts that deserve a separate screencast. Explicitly identifying them makes for a rather verbose flow configuration, especially in a configuration like this one, where every endpoint is connected using synchronous point-to-point -point channels which are the default channel types that are auto-created by the framework based on provided channel names. In Scala, we've implemented a little bit of a different strategy. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we implemented a continuity operator, which essentially implies with three simple keystrokes what in XML would have to be done through explicitly defining a pair of equally named input and output channels. So in Scala, the continuity operator will result in creation of the default channels without the need of explicitly naming them or defining them. However, you still have that option to create channel explicitly. So why would somebody want to define channel explicitly? Well, remember, uh, channels are responsible for uh, handling how the handoff will happen from one endpoint to another endpoint. So for example, in this current configuration, the implied direct point-to-point -point channel means that the handoff of message from this filter to transformer and from transformer to the service activator will happen synchronously in a point-to-point -point, um, style. But what if, for example, I want to hand off the message from this transformer to the service activator asynchronously? Well, this is the responsibility of the channel component configured with a custom asynchronous uh, message dispatcher. So let's do that. Again, as you can see, I'm using a uh, Fluent API to configure this channel, and I'm going to use the name parameter called uh, task executor. Uh, hopefully, IDE support will improve over Scala. And I'm going to use um, Java Utility Concurrent API to um, basically create a new cache thread flow. And here's our, our continuity operator. So now what we have is the, the same flow, which we go from filter to transformer to this service activator. But right now we position this um, asynchronous channel, also known as executor channel which will help the message that's being produced by the transformer to be handed off to this service activator asynchronously. So let's try to run this flow. And as you can see, we see the same hello world message. Um, actually, what, what just got executed was without the channel because we never saved the file. Let's try to save it and execute it again. And obviously, we don't expect anything different to happen, but we know that right now the um, 
handoff from this transformer to the service activator happened asynchronously. Another thing you may have noticed is that in Scala we didn't have to create a messaging gateway explicitly like we did in XML. The messaging flow itself has a very well-defined beginning and end and therefore we're basically exposing send and send and receive method and all you need to do is simply invoke uh, one of these methods on the message flow. Another interesting thing that we from um, Scala-based DSL is ability to partition uh, this flow and sort of enjoy the reusability that is not that simple to accomplish using XML. Let me explain you what I mean by that. So let's try to partition this flow first. We're going to remove this uh, continuity operator and I'm going to call this flow as a transforming flow and I'm gonna uh, call this flow as uh, logging flow and right now I'm going to construct or should I say compose a new flow which is going to be really a composite of transforming flow and a logging flow Let's try to execute this again. As you can see, everything works the same way, but right now it is basically an example of how a uh, message flow becoming nothing more than a reference object that could be shared between various different programs, various different functions, and become part of message flows. You can also see the benefit of Scala strong typing. If you remember, um, all these operations, like for example, evaluating uh, the value of the message payload and uh, prepending hello to the payload was done using Spring expression language, which, although is a language, it is expressed as a simple string and we kind of rely on the fact that we know what the payload is going to be and that our code executes successfully. But as I mentioned earlier, still subject to typos and various types of mistakes that uh, will only reveal itself at runtime. Where um, in Scala, everything uh, is done during the compile time. So in this case, for example, um, I have a function which whose input parameter is the message, and now I'm extracting the payload and comparing it to the to this string value. I can, for example, change it to string and the framework will automatically extract the payload and inject it as a string. And right now the um, M is actually represents the payload so I can remove the get payload and everything else remains the same. So let's try to execute it so you can see. And again, everything works the same way. All right, so this is pretty much all I wanted to show you for this quick introduction, which is based on the first milestone of Spring Integration Scala DSL. This is only the first milestone, and the DSL still relies heavily on Java types from Spring Integration API. However, as it progresses through subsequent milestone, the DSL will evolve to become increasingly more like Scala. And although we do believe that such close integration with the existing API provides instant reusability, we also recognize the benefit of providing Scala wrappers and converters over those types in the future to make the DSL an interaction with the framework more sort of a Scala-esque, if you wish. So this is pretty much all. Um, please visit the project website. Uh, to get uh, more information as well as some of the details on how to get started or how to become involved in this effort and um, well I hope you enjoyed it and um, thank you very much have a great day